So this is briefly what we talked about last time. We started talking about chapter two, and we were looking at motion. And what this chapter is about is that we want to plot motion, and we want to start talking about acceleration. Acceleration is the change in a velocity. So as a review of linear lines, because they play such an important role in motion, the equation of a line is y equals to mx plus b, where the m is the slope. And sometimes we see here is that the slope here is what some people call the rise over the run. In our case, the rise would be the height change along the y direction or along the y parameter. So it's the difference between y1 and y2, that delta y is the rise, and then the run is the horizontal change in time, and that gives us what the slope is. And then B is the y-intercept, that is where that line crosses the axis on the y-axis when t is equal to zero. So what we want to do here is that we're going to plot position and velocity versus time for constant velocity. I said this before, you want to make sure that you become an expert at plots. It is, it is the most important, one of the most important things in physics, without a doubt. So let's go focus and do that. So what I want to do here is that this is what we started off with in chapter one. We talked about average velocity. What we know about average velocity is that it has magnitude and it has direction. So that means I have to get that from the plot. So our definition of velocity, average velocity, is then going to be the magnitude of the rise over the run. And then we need to take a direction. So what you're going to see here is that in here, you're going to see that this guy is going to tell us about the slope, the magnitude of the slope. And this will tell us the direction is that is it sloping upwards or is it sloping downwards? And in mathematics, if it's sloping upwards, that gives us the positive direction. And if it slopes downwards, that gives us the negative direction. So the direction is fairly straightforward. So what we want to do is that we want to write, rewrite this equation. So now what I'm going to focus on is that I'm going to focus on the speed. So we know that the speed is going to be the absolute value of this guy right here. And what we're going to do here is that we're going to rewrite this and assume that this is a positive quantity and this right here is the average speed. Now, we don't deal with average speeds in general. We deal with instantaneous speeds. So for right now, we'll focus on average speed. And then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mathematically rewrite this. So now I'm going to rearrange. this mathematically. So if I do that, I'm going to multiply both sides by delta t. So then I'm going to get delta x, which is in x2 minus x1. And then this is going to be v average. And then on the other side, I'm going to get t. Now, what happens here is that it's customary to rewrite delta t the following way. So delta t should be the difference between t2 and t1. 
we have to start the clock at some point. So what's customary is to set t equal one, t one equal to zero, and then we redefine t two as t. So now if I solve for delta x two, we find here is that r equation for position is then going to be x2 equal to x1 plus v average times t. Our whole goal is to focus on this equation right here. We want to plot this linear equation or constant velocity. And when we introduce acceleration, we're going to plot it for changing velocity. So let's focus on that. And, and we're going to ask the question, what does this mean? So here we go. So I'm going to break this up into cases. So the first case that we're going to look at is case number one. And we're going to look at what does a stationary object look like? Now, if I look at a stationary object, what it does here is it's going to show me that, that um, if I say the word stationary, we already know that its speed must be zero. So then mathematically, that tells me that I have x2 equal to x1 plus zero times t, which then tells me that x2 and x1 must be the same. So, that's not a surprise. So if I was to draw a graph, what does this look like? So if I look at a graph, and this is x and this is t, if this is where I start my point right here, let's say I start my point right here, and this point right here, I'm going to say that this point right here is going to be t1, and this will be x1. And then after some time, this will then be t2. But you can see that x2 is the same as x1. So my line for this situation is a linear line like that. So the object is stationary. So when I'm looking at this, we can then see that from our, that we can rewrite this. So what this really tells us here then is that delta x, which remember is x2 minus x1 is zero. So what we're seeing here is that graphically, This means the line has no slope. And therefore, no change in position. So once again, no slope implies delta x is equal to zero, which implies that an object is at rest. That's what it looks like on a graph. 
But that's not what we're really interested in. What we're interested in, what happens if something is moving? Which then brings us to case two. So here we now have moving objects. with constant velocity. This is what we're most interested in. So immediately, we can look at this and we could start to look at this in terms of our equation. So if we have a moving object there must be a change in displacement In other words, delta x cannot be equal to zero. So what does this mean graphically? Okay, so graphically, how do we see this? Well, if I look at my graph, here's what I see. My graph looks something like this. And we just plotted a stationary object. So what I'm gonna say here is that I'm gonna start right here. Here's where I was right here. And then I went over to let's say, let's spread this out a little bit more than what I did before. So we saw that this line that goes from here to here, that that was our zero velocity line. So if I look at this guy from here to here, I'm going to say that this is our zero velocity line, which means, of course, that the average speed in this case was zero. But now, Delta x cannot be equal to zero. So what that means in this situation here is that I have to have a line that changes. So if I look at my equation again, so from our linear line equation, We said that delta x that x2 was equal to x1 plus v average times t. So what that means here is that x2 has to be larger than x1. So here I go. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw this as point one, and then I'm going to move up here to point two. So now what I'm seeing here is that now I know that this tells me here that this is not zero. So I have to have a slope to this line. And so what you're seeing here is that this shows that there is a rise in my graph. So when I'm looking at this thing, I'm seeing that this has gone up by delta x, because this is my x1, and then this point here, well, it's not very good, is it? And this here is going to be my x2. So this line that I'm showing here 
right in here, this is, tell me, this is the non zero velocity line. In other words, V average in this case is not zero. So what I can do here is that now we can look at this thing and show what is really happening. So if I look at, we started with our line equation of a line here, it's really showing me this here now. It says that I agree that if I start from scratch again, if I look at my linear line again, I have x2, x1 plus v average delta t, or I can rewrite this so that this reads delta x is equal to x2 minus x1, v average times t. So what we're seeing here is that this guy right here, right? This right here, this is the cause of change in displacement. So now that I've kind of drawn this picture, let's let's put this to you know making a little bit more sense with motion diagrams here. So here I go. So what I want to do here is that I want to consider two situations. Two objects that are moving at different speeds. Okay. So as an example, consider two different objects. How about cars? Two different cars moving with different speeds, but same direction. And we haven't talked about that as far as direction yet. It's really whether the slope goes up or down. So I need to differentiate between the two cars here. And so what I'll do here is that let's color code these guys. So let's say that I have a red car and I have a green car. So if I look at my red car, it's this guy. And if I look at my green car, it's going to be this one. Now, what we want to do here is that we're going to say that the red car moves faster. So in this case, what we're going to say is that the... Did I say red car? Let's let's change this. We're going to say that it's going to be it's going to be a slower moving car. So what do I mean by slower moving car? Mathematically, it tells me this: that its speed, which is v one, is going to be smaller. So if I look at my time, that means it's going to give me a smaller change in distance x1. In other words, it's going to go from x1 minus x10. But my green car is going to be moving faster. So this is a faster car. So if it's a faster moving car, then my speed here is going to be higher. So therefore, it's going to cover more distance because it changed its position more. 
So what this is telling me here is that because the speed is the slope, the higher the speed, the steeper the slope. Now I should have done this like this, higher. So now let's look at this thing picture-wise. So then how does this look graphically? So let's look at this thing. So if I look at my graph, I'm gonna, let's see if I can get away with this size. I might might have to modify it, but let's let's just look at this guy right here. And here's what we're looking at. So what I'm seeing here is that the red car doesn't move as fast. So it starts here. Let's say that it starts at this location right here. No, let's do this right here. And this is where the red car initially starts right there. And then what we're gonna see here is that it's gonna move to this location right here. And this location, if I follow this all the way, this will be X1. So what you wanna see here is that this distance right here is delta x1. So now, if I take my line here and I go right across this thing, I could see here is that I have a linear line like this. And so the slope of this line, once again, the slope is the same as the average speed of one. Now let's look at the green car. So if I look at the green car, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that the car right here starts off at X2O and it's gonna move all the way up to here. Ooh, that's not what I really wanted to do. How about if we move it all the way over to here and what we'll do here is that I'll just, um, I'll call that this here is the final position of two. And you can see here is that if I go all the way across, this is that point two. Now, if you look at the distance on this curve, you can see here that that has a bigger change in distance. So if I look at my slope here for this line, you can see that the slope is definitely steeper. But the slope in this case, because it is steeper, that means it has a higher average speed. So if I look at this in terms and motion diagrams, I would then say that I have a car that has dots like this. And so when I look at my speeds, this guy is moving in this direction. And this gives me my average speed of V1 right there. That's what it looks like on a graph. And you can see here is that the distance from here to here, that gives me a small distance of X1. On the other hand, if I look at my green speed, let's say it looks something like this, you're seeing that these arrows are definitely longer. And these speeds are higher. 
Why are these speeds higher? Because per unit time, it covers more distance. So graphically, that's what that means. Now, let's summarize what we know about the speed. So in summary, the slope tells us about the speed and delta x, because that's what really tells us. It's delta x that tells us what the speed is. And so we can say here is that the first thing, the fact that delta x2 is greater than delta x1 immediately tells us here that the green car is faster than the red car, two. So if I have a faster speed, that immediately tells me I have a steeper slope. And that's exactly what's happening with the green car. If I have a slower speed, then that means I have less steep slope. And that's exactly what happens to the red car. Now, what we wanna focus on is we wanna focus on the direction of the car. Okay, so now up here, as we, I probably, I hope I stated it somehow, I did not, we were talking only about the slope, not the direction of the slope, but the magnitude of the slope. So now we should say here is that the sign of the slope gives us the direction of motion. So as I as we are as I already stated, which I did not, I should have done this right from the beginning, the slope tells us two things. One, it tells us about the magnitude. And in this case, we already showed that if it's steeper, that implies fast. If it's less steep, that implies slow. But now, velocity is a vector. So we need to look at the sign, not the sign, excuse me, the direction. And the direction tells us is that if we have a positive slope, that means it's moving, we can either call it positive or we can go to the right. And if it's negative, We call that negative or um, we're moving to the left. So let's go look at what happens if we have slopes here with different directions. So let's look at this thing here. So if I look at my graph, I'm going to draw the following two curves. So as an example, Consider two different lines. So if I plot this thing, 
it's going to look something like this. And so I'm going to say, let's say that I have a line that looks something like this. So that means I'm going from this point one to this point two. Now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to draw a second line. And let's say that the second line looks something like this. And what I'll do here is that I'm going to say here is that I have two points on this line. And this line is going to be, this point is going to be three, and this one is going to be four. Now, if this is position versus time, note that my origin is going to be at zero here. And so what you're seeing here is that when I look at that green line, that means that it crosses the origin. So now what we want to do here is that we want to draw the motion diagrams for these. For these lines. So if I look at the red, what you're seeing with the red, that is clearly a positive slope. So if I look at the red line, it gives me two pieces, right? It has a less steep slope. So that means it's moving slow. And then we see that this thing has a positive slope. So we're going to say that it's moving right. So then if I start to look at my dots here, I'm going to say that this car is going to be moving something like this. So I look at my arrows, and my arrows are looking something like this. Well, this will be going to the right, right there. So I want to be a little bit careful here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that this line right here represents the origin. So you could see here is that this location right here is past the origin. So you could see that where that red dot is at, this point one right here, and over here, this will be point two, you could see that point one is to the right of the origin. And let's assume that this is the origin right here. Now let's look at the green line. So if I look at the green line, what do I see here? So the green line, I clearly see that it has a steeper slope. So it has to be moving fast. Furthermore, I could see that the slope is in the opposite direction. So this thing has a negative slope. So that means it's moving left. Now, again, you could see that this guy right here, x3, is farther from the origin. So where is point three at? Well, if point one is there, then what I'm going to suggest here is that this here, <coughs> excuse me, is gonna be my point three. And if this is my origin, this is what I'm calling zero. So then 
I'm going to arbitrarily pick my points. So now my points are now looking something like this. I have a higher speed and I'm moving to the left. And again, you can see here that I, this thing is passing right through the origin right there. Okay. So now I've got this thing here. And so what I want to do here is that I want to go over some examples here. 